Have you ever felt like you're carrying a heavy cloud of loneliness or a shadow of anxiety and depression that just won't lift? These sticky emotions can hit anyone, even those who seem the strongest. The ancient Stoics, despite being known for their remarkable resilience and courage, were not strangers to emotions like loneliness or depression. So, what made them stand apart? It was not the absence of these feelings, but their practical approach to handling them, which we will unravel in this video. We'll explore 12 Stoic strategies that can help transform these challenging emotions into opportunities for growth and self-reflection. Think of these remedies as tools in your Stoic toolbox, each with its own purpose to help repair your spirit, navigate through tough times and brighten your outlook. Whether you're feeling isolated, overwhelmed or just stuck, remember that just like the Stoics, you have the inner strength to face these emotions head on and emerge stronger. So, if you're ready to turn the page and start a new chapter, one where those emotions are challenges you know how to face, stick around. Together, we'll explore these timeless strategies, not just to cope, but to thrive. 1. Move your body. Moving your body is more than just a path to fitness. It's a vital strategy for combating loneliness and depression. Think of it as a conversation between you and your inner self, where each movement reinforces your strength and resilience. Whether you're walking, running or stretching, you're not escaping your troubles, but actively walking towards a clearer, more peaceful state of mind. This process is about creating a narrative of overcoming with every step you take and every breath you draw, contributing to the story of your personal revival. Let's get real. Feeling down or lonely can make you want to curl up and shut the world out. But here's a secret that's not so secret. Your body has this amazing ability to fight back against these shadows. By moving, you ignite a spark within, a beacon that lights up the darker corners of your mind. You don't have to conquer mountains or run marathons. Just move with intention. Whether it's a solo dance in your living room or a brisk walk in the park, each movement is a strike against the chains of despair. It's a reminder that you're in control, capable of crafting your own path to healing and happiness. Two, be a better friend to yourself. Treating yourself as your own best friend might sound like a modern twist on ancient wisdom, but it's a powerful tool against the shadows of loneliness and depression. Imagine for a moment, you're facing a steep climb up life's mountain, the path littered with challenges that seem insurmountable. Would you berate a friend for stumbling on this path? Or would you offer a hand encouraging words and believe in their strength to overcome? Picture Cleanthus, a figure of ancient stoic wisdom who once encountered a soul speaking to themselves as if addressing an unworthy stranger. Cleanthus' intervention was simple yet profound. Remember, you're not talking to a bad person, he said, slicing through the cycle of loneliness and self-criticism with the sharpness of kindness. This isn't just a tale from the past. It's a mirror reflecting our own battles where isolation breeds a harsh inner critic. And that critic, in turn, fences us further away from the warmth of human connection. Embracing this self-friendship isn't about sweet nothings or false comforts. It's about the raw honesty of acknowledging your worth. When you're teetering on the edge of feeling unworthy, remember the message delivered on Athenian streets. Harsh self-talk locks the door to the love and connection we yearn for. It's about flipping the script in your mind from adversary to ally. You're not a bad person. You're a human, rich in complexity and capable of growth. This realization is the key. 
not just to unlocking self-love, but to opening the door wide to a world where others can see your light. It's a stoic remedy, timeless in its wisdom, urging you to be the friend to yourself that you would seek in others. 3. Be satisfied more. Chasing dreams and reaching them can feel like a never-ending pursuit for happiness, a journey marked with moments of achievement shadowed by an insatiable desire for more. This relentless chase often blinds us to the beauty of our present situation, leading to a paradox where success is met with a sense of dissatisfaction. It's a narrative all too common, echoed in tales of those who've stood in the limelight, only to find themselves grappling with a sense of emptiness. Take, for example, the story of an actor who, despite achieving widespread acclaim on a beloved TV show, found himself ensnared in a web of anxious discontent, yearning for greater stardom in the cinematic world. His experiences underline a profound truth. Our happiness is seldom found in the accolades or achievements, but in the relationship we cultivate with ourselves. Being content means embracing the present, acknowledging and appreciating our current standing without falling prey to the constant comparison or the pursuit of what we don't have. It's about finding contentment in our journey, recognizing that the quest for more can often lead us away from the very happiness we seek. This approach doesn't just alleviate loneliness or depression, it transforms our perspective teaching us to value the now and find joy in the simplicity of being rather than the complexity of achieving. 4. Take a view from above. Imagine standing on a piece of land you call your own, feeling its vastness stretch beneath your feet, only to discover its true size from the vantage point of a spaceship or plane. Suddenly, what seemed boundless now mirrors a speck amidst an infinite tapestry. This perspective isn't new. It's a wisdom echoing from the past, where even Marcus Aurelius, ruling an empire that spanned the known world, recognized the importance of zooming out. He saw his dominion with its fringe skirmishes as mere ants over a crumb. Through this lens, we're reminded that the cycles of life, the rise and fall of generations, and the endless repeat of human nature's dance are not unique to our era. Our personal trials, the moments we deem monumental, are but echoes of a perpetual story. By elevating our viewpoint, we learn that our biggest worries are often smaller than we perceive, and the seemingly insignificant moments connect us to a timeless human experience. It's a call to embrace a broader perspective finding solace, humility and clarity in the realization that we are part of something far greater, a narrative that has unfolded through millennia. This shift in view doesn't belittle our experiences, but connects us to the vastness of life itself, urging us to find meaning in both the grand and the minute, and to recognize the enduring strength and resilience that have always been at the core of human spirit. 5. Learn to suffer with others. There's a profound power and magic in the collective endeavor of overcoming obstacles, be it scaling the daunting heights of a mountain, the synchronized rhythm of a rowing crew against the morning mist, or the collective silence of a meditation group facing the tumult of their minds together. Such experiences, far removed from the solitary trials of running or swimming, forge connections deeper than mere companionship. They remind us that our battles are not fought alone, but shared amongst warriors of the same spirit. Imagine the strength found in the eyes of another, equally determined, equally vulnerable, pushing through the pain barrier. This is where true community is born, in the heat of collective challenge, not in the comfort of easy victories. Let this be a call to step out, 
to join hands with those who seek, not just to endure, but to conquer, together. For it is in the crucible of shared hardship that we discover our true strength and, in turn, never have to face the darkness alone. 6. Ask for help. Courage isn't just about facing battles alone. It's about knowing when to extend your hand for help. Facing the storm alone can forge strength, but even the mightiest warriors knew the value of a shield wall beside them. Marcus Aurelius, a Stoic not just in philosophy but in the battles he led, once illuminated the path for those walking through shadows. Don't be ashamed to need help. Like a soldier storming a wall, you have a mission to accomplish. And if you've been wounded and need a comrade to pull you up, so what? This ancient wisdom rings true today, especially for those feeling the weight of the world on their shoulders. It's a call to arms, not to fight alone, but to seek out your legion, your community that stands ready to bear the brunt of the battle with you. The essence of strength lies not in silent suffering, but in the courage to reach out. Picture support groups, the circles of recovery where souls at their lowest find a shared strength, not through a hierarchy dictating from above, but in the solidarity of shared struggle and mutual support. It's a testament to the power of collective resilience, a modern-day arena where Stoics are made, not born. You're not less for seeking help. You're navigating the path of wisdom that even emperors have walked. Every voice that asks for help, every hand extended in unity, is a step away from the shadows and into the light together. 7. Focus on your path. Carving out your path in this bustling world demands more than just knowing where you want to go. It's about the discipline to stay on course without getting lost in the noise. Seneca introduced us to Emia, the awareness of our journey, undistracted by the myriad paths that intersect ours. This ancient wisdom reminds us that the true challenge lies not in plotting our course, but in resisting the temptation to veer off track, lured by the successes and failures of those around us. It's a test of self-assurance and discipline, requiring us to focus on our goals and timelines without succumbing to the distractions that flood our daily lives. Embracing this path means acknowledging that everyone's journey is unique, including our own. When we stop measuring our achievements against others, we discover a profound sense of purpose and contentment. This realization doesn't come easy. It demands constant effort to overcome the ego and the ceaseless chase for validation. Yet, the reward is the liberation from comparison, the freedom to pursue our aspirations without the shadow of envy or doubt. By focusing on our path, we not only navigate life with a clearer vision, but also cultivate a resilience that shields us from the loneliness and depression that often stem from feeling out of step with the world. 8. Remember the impermanence of things. Life has this funny way of leveling the playing field, where the echo of our actions fades into silence, just like the ancient Marcus Aurelius observed. Even Julius Caesar, and the humblest Roman citizen share the same final address beneath the earth, a powerful reminder that our quests for fame, importance, or immortality are but fleeting whispers against the backdrop of eternity. Sich transit gloria, whispers history, teaching us that glory is a visitor, not a permanent resident. Fame, popularity, the illusion of importance, seduce with promises of eternity, but can sometimes leave us stranded in the shadows of oblivion. This understanding isn't a cause for despair, but a call to anchor our efforts, not in the sands of acclaim, but in the soil of virtue. To cultivate kindness, to dedicate ourselves to the good we can do here and now, 
and to focus on steering our own ship amidst life's stormy seas. These are the beacons that guide us through the fog of transience. For in the end, it is not the applause of the crowd, but the quality of our actions and the integrity of our character that carve the deepest channels in the river of time. 9. Embrace adversity. Every setback, every no, every challenge and every heartache you encounter is not a signal to retreat. It's the universe's unique way of inviting you to a test of strength, a duel with destiny. Seneca, echoing through the ages, whispers to us that the path less trodden, filled with adversity, is where we find our true selves. Sure, sailing smoothly on calm seas is pleasant, but it's the storms that reveal the captain within us. When life doesn't align with our desires, it's tempting to dwell in disappointment. Yet, it's precisely these trials, the very friction and resistance we face, that polish us into better versions of ourselves. It's in the moments when we're knee-deep in the struggle, when plans fall apart and dreams seem distant, that we're offered a golden opportunity. This isn't about wishing for an easier life, but about seizing the chaos, wrestling with it, and emerging stronger, wiser. Embrace this. Let each trial be a lesson in resilience, a practice in virtue, and a step towards excellence. Remember, the sweetness of victory is never as fulfilling without the bitter taste of battles fought and obstacles overcome. So, when life doesn't dance to your rhythm, dance anyway, for it's in these unscripted moments that you're crafting a stronger, happier you. 10. Don't suppress your emotions. Feeling alone or down can feel like carrying a mountain on your shoulders, but remember, even the wisest minds of ancient times grappled with such giants. Seneca, with his pen as his sword, crafted four poignant essays, his consolations, to not just speak to the soul, but to embrace it in its darkest hours. These weren't mere words. They were lifelines thrown into the turbulent seas of human emotion. He taught us a lesson as vital today as it was then. Don't shove your feelings into a box and toss away the key. It's not about wearing an armor of indifference, but about recognizing the storm of emotions and navigating through it, not as its prisoner, but as its master. Understanding why a cloud of sadness hangs over you is the first step, yet knowing it's okay to feel, to acknowledge the complexity of human connections, that's where true strength lies. It's a dance between mind and heart, each taking the lead when the moment calls. So, when the weight of loneliness or sorrow feels unbearable, remember, you're not being asked to silence your heart, but to listen to it, to understand it, and to know that sometimes the path through isn't about suppression, but about acceptance and wisdom. 11. Seek stillness. Harnessing stillness in a world that never stops talking, scrolling and moving might seem like an ancient secret. Yet it's a remedy for the soul, especially when loneliness or sadness knocks on your door. Think of yourself as a rock amidst the ocean's fury, as Marcus Aurelius muses, unyielding to the waves of worry, doubt and loneliness that crash against you. It's not about ignoring the chaos, but finding your center in the midst of it. Slow your breath, steady your mind, and plant your feet firmly on the ground. This moment of stillness isn't just a pause, it's where the magic happens, where creativity blooms, connections deepen, and joy bubbles up from within. It's in this tranquility that you'll find the strength to face the world, not as it whirls around you, but as you choose to engage with it. By embracing stillness, you don't just survive the storm, you learn the dance of the waves, moving with a grace that turns loneliness and depression into moments of profound peace and purpose. 12. 
accept things as they are. Facing the whirlwind of life, it's easy to get lost in a sea of what-ifs and if-onlys. Yet there's a powerful antidote to the loneliness and depression that often accompanies our relentless chase for different outcomes, accepting things as they are. This isn't about surrendering to despair or admitting defeat. It's about recognizing the hidden harmony in the chaos, the unexpected lessons in disappointment, and the strength that comes from embracing life's unpredictability. By accepting the present moment as it is, not as we wish it were, we unlock a profound sense of peace and clarity. This perspective isn't about passivity, it's a call to action to engage with life on its own terms, to find our purpose and happiness in the reality that unfolds around us. Imagine your life as a river. You can struggle against the current, exhausting yourself while trying to swim back to a past moment or to reach a future too swiftly. Or you can float, letting the water carry you where it will, trusting in the journey and finding joy in the scenery along the way. This is the essence of Amor Fati, a love of fate. It teaches us to cherish each twist and turn, life presence, understanding that each serves a purpose in shaping who we are meant to be. Marcus Aurelius, a voice from the past, whispers to us across time, urging us to see that what we add to our life's fire, be it joy, sorrow, triumph or defeat, fuels our growth, illuminating our path to greatness. By embracing our experiences, not as obstacles but as opportunities, we cultivate resilience and a deep, unwavering contentment. Dive into the practice, not just the theory, and witness the transformation within yourself. These stoic remedies aren't just words, they're a blueprint for a life filled with resilience and profound contentment. Every week, I share insights and wisdom inspired by Stoicism, reaching out to a global community, seeking for a more meaningful existence. If your spirit seeks guidance, join us through the link below. It's a journey without cost, but rich in rewards, and you're in control of your subscription. Embrace the wisdom that has weathered millennia and see for yourself how it reshapes your world.